now please uh, let's uh, welcome Ambassador Bosco Matamoro, who's going to tell us some very interesting stories about Nicaragua. Excuse me. Thank you very much. I apologize. I just came from Managua, and to be very frank, I will be very clear as I am in Washington and very prudent as I have to be back in Managua. Well, uh, this event reminds me somewhat of the 1980s uh, when I was a member of the Contra movement and there was concern about the role of the Soviet Union and what was taking place with revolutionary movements and the enthusiasm of the ideological motivation of the Castro government, which was replaced by the ideological motivation of the petrodollar. But it's somewhat, uh, we have some similar uh, situation, what to do, what represents the United States, what would be the role of the United States, and what is the question of security versus democracy. In this brief paper, I, I tried to make some mentions of Daniel Ortega, the role of the Obama administration, what happened with the Obama administration and the insertion of Russia, China, and the question of the future in Nicaragua, especially in the light of the agreement that the Ortega government signed with the OAS. Uh, since 2007, Daniel Ortega has been the Nicaraguan president thanks to the division of the Liberal Party and the help of the U.S. Ambassador at the time. In some aspects, the new Ortega government has been different, not least because of a close marriage with the private sector, which the majority of the country believes has become a government extension. In the U.S. war on drugs, his government claims to be the Stalingrad of Central America. However, regional statistics in terms of captures show show it in the last position. Following the example of Oscar Arias, and this may sound paradoxical, his political nemesis, Ortega managed to demolish a constitutional impediment to be re-elected. However, unlike Mr. Arias, he persists with remarkable obstinacy in the presidency. In his version of socialism of the 21st century, institution, as in Venezuela, have been demolished. And only as a reaction to the threat of U.S. sanctions for fraudulent municipal elections has he acceded to a three-year agreement with the Organization of American States to make electoral reforms, despite the fact that his government requested the resignation of the OES secretary. Internationally, Mr. Ortega is the dean of the ever-diminishing group of so-called ALBA countries. However, true to his role, he remains a stalwart ally of the Maduro government, keeps a close relationship with Cuba, and a center for Russian activities in Central America, as well as a failed aspirant to continental China investors. As how, how has Ortega managed to remain in power? On the one hand, by his marriage with the Chavez Maduro government, and to, on the other, to a great extent, by eight years of the minimalist policies by the Obama administration toward Latin America, whose outcomes are very perplexing. The historical decision by President Obama to reestablish diplomatic relations with Cuba with the expectation of a gradual opening of the Cuban regime has not been successful, nor has it diminished the hostility of the ALBA country. To underline this vision, traveled by Secretary of State Hillary Clinton around the world brought her to the region on only one occasion. These developments, despite the end of the Soviet Union, the Obama approach in Central America brought Nicaragua in some form back to the 80s. At that time, the Soviet Union established close security relations with the government. Now it has very close relations with the new Ortega government. <laughs> These developments are not accidental. The U.S. has been involved in conflicts in Afghanistan and the Middle East, a, a region that harbors terrorist groups and is also most of the world oil reserve. And although Central America does not have oil resources, it potentially presents a threat that may affect the economic and social stability of Mexico and the U.S. security. 
In this context, Nicaragua plays a pivotal role in the region for two reasons. It close alliance with the Venezuela government and a close security relation with Russia. This situation has transformed the region into three triangles. The Northern Triangle, that includes Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala, with which the U.S. has developed very close cooperation with the government through the Alliance for Prosperity, and established a commission for transparency and the rule of law. However, it has not resolved the issue of the Mara violence. The Southern Triangle, that includes Panama, Colombia, and Costa Rica, Center of Economic Development and Democratic Institutions. However, Costa Rica vulnerability has increased due to drug traffic, trafficking and the fact that over half a million Nicaraguans live and found work in that country. The third triangle, which I think is the most important and represents the big challenge for the United States, is composed by Cuba, Venezuela, and Nicaragua. In terms of security, their geographic presents a choking point for U.S. shipments and a threat to U.S. allies in the region. In the international forums, and especially the OAS, Nicaragua plays a clear role in blocking actions against the Maduro government because of its violations in the Inter-American Democratic Charter. And as important as this role in the international institution is the intimate financial relationship between PDVSA and Albanese of Nicaragua, controlled by high-level associations that hamper the effectiveness of U.S. sanctions against the Venezuelan government. The aggressive security presence of Russia and the strong economic and commercial competition from China are the result not only of new multi-center world, but also of U.S. abdication. The Trump administration with its new doctrine of U.S. preeminence represents a dramatic departure from the minimalist version of the Obama years, which was underlined by Secretary Tillerson's trip to the region. To achieve its objective in the region, I believe that the U.S. must not use its war on drugs and security concerns at the expense of the challenges of democracy, transparency, and the rule of law. In the Nicaraguan case, the cooperation on the war on drugs without a system of democratic control has increased authoritarianism and the social fracture. The Ortega government, because of electoral frauds and human rights violations, signed that three-year agreement with the OAS for those reforms. However, the application of the Majinsky Act against the chairman of the Electoral Council prompted the government to take some kind of changes in 24 hours, underlining the absolute control of the Ortega government on the state institution. These events indicate that the time frame and the agreement with the OAS requires a new horizon, where these reforms in Nicaragua should be implemented within six months maximum, or within a framework of a referendum as occurred in Ecuador. U.S. capacity to impose sanctions and access to its market should be an incentive for democratic change and economic development in Nicaragua, and it will not be realized in the region with an abdication of the U.S. leadership or the abandonment of its democratic principles. Thank you.